back. So I had to stop the video for a little bit. But we are back. Um, yeah. So we left off on religion. Um, so we left off on service projects. Yep, again. So we will make like fun projects. Like, for example, like we will like tape paper tubes together with, um, with, um, colored tape, and we will, like, make cardboard boxes of, like, pictures for kids in the hospital to look at, and some food cans for a service for food. So that's pretty much all that we are going to learn in religion. Yep. So in reading ELA, we will do novel studies. Novel studies. Novel studies is a pretty big word for big book. So, for example, we are going to be reading a big, big book each month. And it is going to have a bunch of pages. So let's just sit there and have 233 pages. I don't know. Yep, so we'll read this big, giant book. It's super big. So that's what we will be focusing on, novel studies. Um, yeah, so we will read a book, a big book each month. And, I mean, each every two months. So for the first month of November and December, we will read a big book. And then January and February, and then March and April, and then May and June, and then July and um, half of August, we will read a big book. Yeah, novel studies, and then every time we finish the big book, then um, we go out um, our, to eat lunch somewhere to celebrate. Here, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a wet cloth to like, wipe all it off. Is there, oh, here's a wet cloth. I got to go wet it. you all the steps that we will be doing for novel studies. Yep. So. Alright, so step one. We are going to read read the big book. The big book Every two months. So, step one, we're going to read the big book every two months. Step two. When... We finish finish the big book.
we will go out to lunch to celebrate. So step one, we will read the big book every two months. Step two, when we finish the big book, we will go out to lunch to celebrate. Yep, so that's um, about novel studies. It's not like novel, like novel, big novel. do is we will gatekeep her with text evidence. So again, that won't start until February, so we will start text evidence. Wait, now let me put it a little bit more at the top. So, all about text evidence, and I will tell you a little bit more about text evidence. evidence. So once everyone's 11, they will get a phone and we will start learning how to text people with evidence from the text. So, um, yeah, so once everyone turns 11 and in third and fourth grade, I think, is when you start learning about text evidence. You're going to start talking about it. Yeah, you're going to start talking about it. So step one, once everyone's 11, once everyone's 11, Alright, so step one. Once everyone's 11, they will get a phone. Step two, they will learn how to text. Alright, so all about text evidence. Step one, once everyone's 11, they will get a phone. 
Step two, they will learn how to text and use evidence from your text to support your text. Say you guys are probably like, whoa, 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 Mrs. Shepard. Can you please explain that again? Yep, I will. Not a no right whiteboard well, though. Once everyone in our class has turned 11, by like February, I think it's going to be, they will get their very own phone. And then your parents, yeah, you can get a school phone, and your parents will probably get you one too eventually. You might already have a phone, but we're going to give everyone a special kind of phone. So they will learn how to text people. And text evidence is you're going to, um, so I'm going to have you, like, write down the text on the piece of paper. And then you're going to, um, find out that what the, su what the subject of your, um, text is and what your, um, predicate is, your predicate is. So it's kind of like evidence. It kind of, it's kind of like a mystery, and it's something that last year's fifth graders loved doing in fifth grade. All right, next we have sentence studies. Sentence studies, like if I wrote a sentence, um, the cat. The cat in the hat. This is just a sentence. The cat in the hat. The cat in the hat. So then, once I've written a sentence on the board, you guys are probably like, what sentence studies is for kindergartners? We know how to write sentences. It's not learning how to write them. It's learning how to turn sentences into real books. So if we just took one sentence, the cat in the hat, the cat in the hat, the cat in the hat. What can we do with it? We could make that our title of our story, the cat in the hat, and use evidence from the t and use um and use um what so underline something like the cat. You could use that word in the story, cat. The cat, you could say the cat. Went to buy a hat that he was in. So just, so if I just wrote another, here, let's try another one. All right. So the the flower smelled very good. The flower smelled very good. So we could just take, we can sentence studies here at our school, we just take little sentences and make them into big stories. So a boring sentence, like this smells, smells good. Isn't that a little bit boring? Yep. So we could just take this whole thing and create it into our own story.
So that will be our title. The flower smelled very good. So we could just take, so these are all the steps that we're doing for sentence starters. These are all the steps. So we're just taking a sentence and then making it a story and then just putting the title in, just putting the title in it, just putting, so if the, my sentence was, the ice cream was very delicious. So, um, then we would put that, um, as our title, the ice cream was very delicious. And then we'd like to make it into a big story. So, um, use all the words from your title to support your um, story. Yeah, so Cindy and Finney's last year's class said, there was a girl named Leia, and she said that she, like, loved sentence studies. Like, she, like, could not live without it. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really fun. And we will also do creative writing, and that is the same thing. So creative writing. So creative writing is like a di kind of different. So um, it's kind of like sentence studies, but you can make your own sentences, not on the board. So let's make our own um, sentence. Um, so... Yeah, and also, no, that's not right. Actually, no, we get to write our very own stories without any sentences. Actually, that's what I would. Oh my gosh, what? I don't think that. So, the Halloween costumes. The Halloween costumes. So we'll get to write our own stories, but most sentence studies and creative writing. So what would be the per so what would who would be the person in our story? The person, let's make the name. It could be Ava. Elena. And Lauren. Those will be the people in our story, and the problem is they can't find Halloween costumes. And the resolution is what? The resolution would be they finally found them. So creative writing is kind of like writing your very own stories and like telling, like it's kind of like a book report, like telling like what the resolution in your story was or like telling what the characters were or how they solved the problem. So that was all reading slash ELA. So next we have social studies, and again, I have no idea what you guys are going to be learning in social studies. So, social studies, I can't really tell you much. Now I'm going to just put social studies at the top.
All right, it looks like the Aaron Warren and the book, though. I'm gonna, I, I don't have time to write all this because the video has already been 20 minutes. So, W H, which is Western Hemisphere. Next, I'm gonna put D O. Which stands for development of M. Next we have A S A, which stands for America plus S America. Next we have G, which stands for geography. And next we have M S, which is map skills. So that's a little bit about social studies. I have no idea about any of those things, but it looks like that you're gonna learn those things in social studies. So I can't really tell you much. Um all right, next we have this map. So we will have a big focus on dimensionals and fractions. So you will start learning fractions in fourth grade. Well, you kind of learn them in first grade, but it's not like a big focus. So fractions and dimensionals, which are like really hard shapes to remember. Like fractions and dimensionals. Like, they're like really hard shapes, like a quadrilateral or something. Like, really, really, really hard shapes. And fractions are like really hard. Like, if I put, like, um. Like. So, if we put one half and it said, color one out of three. How would you do that? How would you do that? How many slit slits are there? One, two. So how will you shade one out of three? That's what's really hard about fractions. So you will just shade in One. Okay, I'm gonna make that a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna... Yes, that's how we're gonna be doing. You will learn all of that in fifth grade, and you're probably like, Mrs. Shepherd, how are we learning that? You will learn as much as you possibly can in first fourth fifth grade. I'm really excited to tell you this. Multi-step problems. Let me just put it. Let me just um Give me a multi-step problem. Twenty plus twenty minus ten times. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, times five Wait. times one divided by thirteen equals one. So let's first put 20 plus 20, which equals 40. And what was the minus? Minus 10 equals 30 times 1 equals 30 divided by 13 equals what? 
you could fi so you could figure out that multi-step problem at home. Yes, yeah, so we're going to put an addition, multiplication, division, and subtraction problem all together. Next, you'll do the place value plus powers of 10. So the place value, if I add a number 1,000, what will be the place values? Which zero do we pick? Which zero? The last zero. Because the last zero, the whole reason why we're doing the last zero is um so we are doing yeah so the last zero is because so if we did the number 100 will be our zero the last one because if we did the second one then it would be right next to the 10. So we'll be doing powers of 10, which means that we'll learn a lot about 10s, because we will have a lot of tests about 10s. All right, so if we did the number 13, it's a really simple one. Of course, this would be the place value. And this would be our 10. If we did the number 1,055, what would be it? The 0 after the 10. And then the 10 would be 1. I know, it's kind of weird, actually. I learned, When I learned this in fifth grade, I thought it was a little hard. I know. Yeah, but fifth grade is supposed to be hard, because that means you can feel ready for our junior high. Um, volume plus cover and measurement. So let's just say that I had a little ruler here. So this is really simple. It's just like another thing for measurement, you know. We will learn how to jump. So if it's two inches, then two inches plus blank inches equals five inches. So if I measured um, a coin here, let me just put a coin, or let me just color in a circle, just put it in a circle, and pretend it's a ball. Yeah, it's a ball. So we're going to be measuring it. So measuring it. So it landed on two. And if the problem was two centimeters, plus blank centimeters, plus three centimeters, equals five centimeters. You guys get math? Yeah, math is a little bit hard in fifth grade, but it's fine. All right, next we have science. So in science, we will blast off to space, learn all about space, and learn some things about space. So we will learn about the interactions within a Scottish system and why light and sound are important and force and motion.
Yes, it's all about science. Well, that was a little bit more details about stuff. Um, I just realized I'm really sorry, but we're running out of time to read the book. I didn't know that it was going to take this long. And I just thought that I was going to show you about religion and, you know, right? But unfortunately, I got a little bored, so I just wanted to show you the rest of the stuff. So I'm really sorry, but I don't think that we're going to have time to read the story today. But if you could look on my channel, Nina's Room, then you could see some other read-alouds of Mrs. Shepard reading read-alouds. Um, yeah, today's kind of, yeah. So I hope you all have a great Halloween tomorrow, and I will see you again. And hopefully, maybe, like, maybe at least not one, t one more time um, before. Here, let me put all this stuff in the floor. Oh, oh my gosh. Dropping the floor, dropping the floor. Please don't make any sounds. Whoa. Put this on the floor. And this right here on the floor. Whoa. And this on the floor. Alright. So, um, I hope I hope I can at least see you like on November 2nd or something. Or at least like two days before the first day of school. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful break.